I always believe that any student who is taking some core science classes in college should also get credit for foreign language along with it. Why do I say this? You'll understand, believe me, by the time you're done with A&P. The reason is because we use a lot of specific jargon. For example, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal. Don't pause and rewind. We'll cover those in more detail later on. But we use a very specific language in our study of anatomy and physiology. This also is one of the biggest hurdles for the new student. Not only are you required to learn all these different parts and pieces and how they connect together, but we use a language that you don't use. You don't hang around with your friends going superior, inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal. You don't use those terms. So not only are we requiring you to learn all these body parts, we're also requiring you to learn a second language. It can be done. I've seen plenty of students do it, but be aware that language is also one of the major hurdles to get over as you get to your mastery of the topic. Here are some basic words that we need to get out of the way right now. Now, before I continue, a hint to you out there is to buy note cards, little white note cards or multicolored note cards, your choice on this one. They can be freestanding or spiral bound. And what you're going to want to do is write down the word on one side and the definition on another. The first term is anatomy. Anatomy literally comes from the word to cut up. It translates from Latin to cut up. It is the study of structure. An anatomist is looking at a bone going, hey, here's a bone. What does it do? Don't care. It's a bone. It's the humerus. The humerus is here. What does it do? I don't care. I'm an anatomist. That's a humerus. It's here. The other side of that coin, because I doubt you're taking human anatomy and that's it. You're probably in anatomy and physiology. The physiology part is the study of structure. It's the study of nature. So the anatomist goes, hmm, look at this. It's a bone. It's a humerus. The physiologist goes, yes, and here's what it does. So we have a combination of the two. Anatomy is the study of structure, it's the study of what is it, while the physiology portion is what does it do and how does it do it. Pathology is our next word. Pathos means suffering, pain. Um, I would imitate a Yoda accent and say suffering, but it would come out really corny. I'd probably sound more like Jar Jar Binks. Um, but pathology is the study of suffering, pain. It's the study of when things go wrong. Pathology is a very interesting topic, but you really have to know how things are supposed to work to appreciate it when they don't work. So we have anatomy, to cut up means study of structure. Physiology, which means the study of how it does what it does, why it does what it does. And we have pathology, which is the study of why did it go wrong? Moving on, we have microscopic anatomy. Microscopic anatomy is the study of anatomy using things to see it with. Horrible explanation. Let me clarify this for you. With microscopic anatomy, something is too small for us to see with our unaided eye. No matter how good your eyesight might be, you're not seeing it. You have to have some sort of visual device a microscope, an electron scanning microscope, something else to see it. We have two kind of sub-branches under microscopic um, uh, anatomy, and that is histology, which is the study of tissues, and cytology, which is the study of cells. So histology is the study of tissues. Okay, you're looking at muscle tissue or skeletal tissue. And cytology is the study of cells. You're looking at cell biology. Gross anatomy is the exact opposite of microscopic anatomy. Gross anatomy, although it sounds like it tells you what it is, which is ugh, nasty stuff, it's not. Gross anatomy is the study of anatomy with the unaided eye, meaning we can see it without looking through a microscope. Although, ironically, gross anatomy typically turns into gross anatomy. It's typically the anatomy where you're cutting open a cadaver. The last two is regional anatomy and systemic anatomy. Regional anatomy, you're looking at a region. 
So for example, you might be looking at the arm and the forearm and you would open up one, this again is usually done in gross anatomy, you would cut open the area and you would look at the muscles and you'd look at the veins and the arteries and the nerves and the bones in this area. And then you would move to a different region so forth and so on. Systemic anatomy is typically how the undergrad anatomy course is taught and that is by body systems. Later on in lesson one, we'll take a look at the different body systems. But for now, that's going to end our brief discussion on some basic terms that you need to know. Believe me, I will hit you with some other terms before lesson one is over, but get these under your belt right now. Our next video, we're going to take a look at levels of organization.